What's up guys, welcome back and in this video I'd like to work on our image gallery and clicking through our multiple images for this product and displaying the correct image. Now in the last video we managed to get our multiple images showing up here and in this video it's mostly going to be just front-end stuff, CSS, JavaScript to get this image gallery to work. Now every time I'm using JavaScript, a huge part of me wants to use Vue.js, but everything I've been doing so far is not that big and I can't justify pulling in a library for doing these small little things. So we're just going to be using vanilla JavaScript for this and maybe eventually we'll pull in Vue when we have to. I also originally wasn't going to plan to show you the CSS because I felt like it might have taken too long. but I changed my mind and I'm taking you guys along for the CSS ride. All right, let's go into our code here. And what's going on here? Uh, the SAS file I'm interested in is called products.sass. And the first thing I'm gonna do is give this a class name. So this is where our multiple images are showing. So these two right here. I'm going to take this out for now. The if statement and we'll put it in later just so I can work the CSS. So let's call this product section images plural and this is just where the images are going to go. Let's just see if that's correct. Okay, and the plan here is to have small little thumbnails and we'll see how it looks along the way. I'm going to use CSS, CSS grid for this. So product section images. Let's make a new section here. Let's put it right here. Product section images. And like I said, we're going to use CSS grid. If you're not familiar with CSS Grid, I have a video on CSS Grid. Or if you want to dive deep into it, take a look at Wes Boss's CSS Grid course. Uh, so Grid Template Columns. <coughs> so I'm going to want six thumbnails in one row. So repeat six times one fraction. I want the gap to be 20 pixels. And I want a margin top of 20. Now, yeah, so that looks good. Obviously, we don't want this lorem text. We want thumbnails in here. So I'm going to make a new div here with a class of product section thumbnail. And I'm going to put the image in here. And for now, we're just going to hard code it, like I said. And let me just grab a few images. Uh, let's put that not found in there. And see how that looks. Okay, it's looking good. Now in our CSS, let's go ahead and define some style for that. So product section thumbnail. Let's use flex blocks just to center the image vertically. Let's give it a border, one pixel solid. Let's just make it light gray. Uh, let's give it a main height. I already did this before, so I know I need a minimum height. And let's do cursor pointer. And let's see how that looks. So yeah, you can see there's a border. You might not be able to see it because of the image I'm using. But let's put a few more images in here, just to, so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, let's go into the products. And let's try the laptop here. 
see how that looks. All right, that's looking good. Again, I just want to put some dummy data in here to make sure it looks okay. What else is here? I think there's an appliance. Let's do another one for a tablet. Okay, let's just keep pasting that in. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Let's give it a hover state. So back to our CSS. Um, right here, we can do hover. And let's just give it a different border color. And let's give it this color. Okay. See if that worked. Okay. Cool. And let's also make the first one selected because by default, this one should be selected. So right here, we can just nest it in here. Border, one pixel, solid. Yeah, I should be using variables, but whatever. Is that right? 979797. Cool. And let's make sure we make the first one selected. It's right here. Cool. Okay, now let's work on our JavaScript. So all I want to happen is as I click these images, I want this image to update. Now, if you're being really diligent and you care about performance, you can use thumbnails and you can just make an Ajax request to the main image of that thumbnail. In the last video, I showed you how to generate thumbnails. And like I said, if you really care about performance, only load the thumbnails here and make an Ajax request to the bigger, bigger image here. But we're not gonna do that. Um, it shouldn't be too big of a file. So we'll just load all the images in here and as we click it, it'll just load the bigger version here, which is the same image as the thumbnail. Okay, back to our code. Down here, let's just make a new section and this is gonna be a script. And I like to wrap everything in an invoking function. And the first thing I want to do is just grab what we need. So const current image is the big image. So document dot query selector. And let's just grab the current image. Let's make sure we name that. So this will be the big image. So right here. So ID equals current image. Okay. Uh, what's next? We need the images. So images. So these are all the small images. Document dot query selector all. Uh, so what was that called? It was called product section thumbnail. So it's just, let's look for it, thumbnails. So just, yeah, these thumbnails that we made up here. And we're grabbing the surrounding div, not the image itself. Okay, what's next? So now we have to add an event handler for each one of those thumbnails. So we can just do a for each. And we can just grab that element. We can use the arrow function and we can add an event listener. So add event listener. So we're gonna listen for click. And let's just make a new function here called thumbnail click. And let's define that down here, function thumbnail click Let's take the event in 
And what are we doing here? Let's just change the current image, the SRC of that, and let's just set it to whatever was clicked. So this is whatever was clicked, but like I said, that's the div. So let's look for the image inside of it. Let's grab the image and let's grab the SRC from that. And if I did this correctly, that should switch images. And it does, awesome. Uh, there's a few things we need to work on here. Uh, what do we need to work on? So we want this. Remember, there's a selected class for the currently selected thumbnail. So we want to add it to the one that was clicked. And we also want to remove it from all the other ones. So let's do that in two steps. Let's add the selected class on the one we clicked. So this class list add selected so this should add the border on whatever we click and it does cool but we also have to remove it from all the other ones so let's go ahead and do that let's just remove it here so images dot for each element arrow so element dot class list dot remove selected. And that should remove it from all the other ones. Cool, it does. Awesome. So the next thing I want to do is add a transition. Uh, this is not bad, but I kind of want a fade in and fade out when I click on these images, so it doesn't seem so janky. Uh, so let's use CSS transitions for that. So for this, what is this called? This is called the product section image. So what I'm going to do here is in our CSS for the product section image here, I'm going to grab the image. I'm just going to make it invisible initially. So it's set the opacity to zero. We're going to transition this. So transition the opacity. Uh, let's just do it really quick. So 0.1 seconds. Let's use the ease in out easing function. And that should do it. And underneath here, so for active. When I put an active class on that, I want the opacity to be its full opacity. So if you go back, this should be invisible, and it is. Let's just set that class to active. So product section image, product section image. So let's set this class to active. Okay, okay, cool. So now in our JavaScript, if we just do something like this, I wanna see the transition happen, so let's do this. Current image, let's just remove the class, the active class, because transitions happen when classes are added or removed. So let's remove the active class and let's take this out and this should remove the active state and the transition should happen now so let's just double check that that works let's see if this phase out and it does cool so what do we want to happen now so once that's done we want to do this line and we want to fade it back in so what we can do here is add an event listener on that current image. So the event listener is called transition end. And when that happens, we want to load a new image 
and we want to add the active class on it. And that should transition nicely. Let's double check. OK. And it does. Cool. Now we have a nice fade in, fade out effect. Cool. Now we can just replace our hard coded images up here. We don't need this. Let's replace our hard coded images here with that loop that we have. So. Let me just delete these ones. Let me keep this one for reference. Let me uncomment this. And OK. We want, yeah, something like this. Not just the image, but that surrounding div as well. So let's, OK, so that's good. We want this. Paste that in. Paste that in, OK. And that should do it. Uh, well, there's no images for this one, is there? OK, there is. So yeah, that that does it. Um, we actually need to show the, the thumbnail for this one as the first one. So let's just grab this. Put it up here. Okay, there's no selected on these ones. They're selected on the first one. And this one will be product image. Yeah, same image as the big one initially when we first load. Okay. So there you go. This is kind of confusing because I added the same image. But let's just do another one. Let's go to a laptop one and okay there's only one there but if you go into here uh, where's laptop one here let me just add a whole bunch of images two more okay eight files let's save that might take a little second because it's eight files. Okay, let's see if it uploaded. Just check here. Okay, they're pretty huge, but in here, there you go. And if we click them, they appear correctly in our image over here. Now, what I would do is in Voyager, I would make sure that the uploaded image doesn't exceed a certain width. And if it does, we can just scale it down using what I showed you in the previous video. Or we can just set guidelines as to whoever uploads images, make sure it doesn't exceed a certain width, or this page will be not very performant in terms of loading. But yeah, other than that, we've managed to flush out this image gallery over here and we have thumbnails. We can click on these images and everything looks good. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.